Hey guys, Jerdo here back again with another YouTube video. So continuing on with the success of my last video of, of uh, five common mistakes that new players make. Um, people really like that video. So I'm back again today with another video of another five mistakes that I think uh, new players make that you guys um, will hopefully avoid uh, by watching this video. So hope you guys enjoy. So the first mistake is retiring ships that you'll need, uh, including boolins. Um, a lot of the time you don't know what you're doing early on and uh, you know you see these medals and you see a really nice shiny SSR ship that costs 80 medals and like oh man how am I going to get those 80 medals so you go you, know, you see that you have a few of these gold boolins and you go ahead and you know what you trying to tire them and holy crap they give you 10 medals each. Uh, I want to get some of those medals so I can get uh, that shiny SSR ship in the medal exchange. Do not retire ships uh, that you think you'll need. Um, this, this, I guess, early on, this will include boolins. Um, a lot of the time, people will just like see boolins, see that they'll have a lot of them, and start retiring them. Boolins are very important, especially golden boolins. Prototype boolins are quite rare. You get one weekly from the weekly event missions, and then after that, they're 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 quite rare. You can get them from the metal exchange, you can get them from the merit shop. They're 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 hard to come by, and you need a lot of them in order to maximum break your SSR ships. So make sure that you never retire prototype boolins. Also, never retire universal boolins. These are also quite useful um, I have a lot here but that's because um, I've been playing for a long time and this isn't even that many honestly I just used a bunch to maximum break some ships to get fleet tech um, that fleet tech will be covered in another video but also don't retire universal balloons very important um, to maximum break your ships and then lastly don't retire elites and rares that you think you'll need um, and this will include ships that uh, you think you're gonna use maybe take a look at a tier list and check um, if the ship if the ship that you got um, is, is any good let's say you have a couple of Cleveland's laying around you probably don't want to retire the other one Cleveland is a really good ship you probably don't want to retire copies of Phoenix early on and stuff like that um, especially rares it kind of feels bad using a, a universal boolean on a rare ship to maximum break it so make sure that you kind of have a bit of a future idea in terms of what you're, the ships are going to be using um, and, and if you do get a duplicate of them make sure to save that copy so you're not wasting boolins on ships that you got multiple copies of um, because they are hard to come by especially prototype boolins so make sure that you're careful with what you're retiring and don't retire ships that you'll need another common mistake that new players tend to make and and that's something that they tend to neglect is upgrading your gear early on especially on on blue and purple guns um it's actually makes quite a bit of a difference going from plus zero to plus six plus six is a common stopping point when enhancing gear because in order to get from plus six to plus seven you need to start using purple plates and purple plates are obviously kind of much harder to get by um, especially early on in the game when you haven't even reached any worlds that drop purple plates yet so generally you want to level up stuff to plus six if it's blue i might stop at plus three because it's not really worth spending gold and plates on on blue gear uh, unless it's a fire suppressor really if you have a purple gun you start um, acquiring those slowly through tech boxes and, and and blueprints and stuff like that plus six is a good place to stop so you want to prioritize the main gun obviously in most ships most ships you want to prioritize the main gun. Some ships uh, have really low firepower, like Ayanami and stuff like that, that won't really benefit too much from the main gun. Um, but in general, um, any any ships with, with equip a gun, especially battleships, battleships huge main gun uh, improvements. If you want to increase the damage that you're that you're uh, dealing to your enemies, make sure that you increase the main gun. And then also your auxiliaries, uh, the repair tools is easily acquirable early on in three four repair tools is really good gives you a uh, lots of health so you want to make sure that you're enhancing those in order to increase your survivability so a lot of players uh, for some reason early on they kind of neglect um, leveling up their gear they just kind of slap guns on and are kind of too scared to enhance any gear don't worry about it too much as long as, as long as you're not using purple plates um you're going to be fine blue plates are fairly common and they're not hard to to acquire um and it does help a lot in terms of survivability and damage dealing and allows you to clear clear worlds faster and get to higher worlds faster we are going to start being able, being able to acquire those purple plates and enhancing gear uh even higher so make sure that you're enhancing guns that are worth it i mean there are some 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 guns that are just absolutely trash that you kind of want to avoid make sure you're looking at some equipment guides just to have a rough idea in terms of what guns you're looking for to enhance but in general you should be enhancing uh your gear very very early on maybe just a plus three it helps a lot and then once you start getting to worlds three four five uh, you definitely want to be getting all your stuff to plus six to make sure that uh, that you're doing as much damage as possible and surviving as as well as you can so yeah so don't neglect your gear make sure you're upgrading it as you go along uh, this next one is trying to fit every single ship requirement into a hard mode requirement so for instance this is the world nine requirements um it says you know you need two battleships a heavy cruiser and a destroyer in fleet one and then a carrier battle cruiser and a light cruiser and destroyer in fleet two maybe not everybody knows this but you don't actually need to fill in all the slots with exactly what it asks for as long as you fill one requirement in the back line and the front line of each fleet then you're good 
uh, you're, all you need is one requirement of each. So here I can just use one battleship and I can either pick heavy cruiser or destroyer. In this case, I'm just gonna pick a heavy cruiser. Let's put Zara in there. And this actually fills the requirements for fleet one. Um, here in fleet two, let's say I'm gonna put a battle cruiser. Let's put a Magi in here. And then from the front, uh, a light cruiser. Let's put in uh, Helena, cause let's say it's a boss fleet. Um, and then that's it. That's all you really need. Um, obviously the other requirement at the bottom here, average level 87, you have total firepower and total torp greater than a thousand. You still need to fill those. So let's put uh, maybe Ayanami here or uh, Kitakaze or someone to increase that uh, firepower uh, requirement. But my point is that you don't actually need to fill in all the slots that it asks for only up to the point where you reach the requirements at the bottom. So here you can see I have the battleship open, destroyer open, and carrier slot open that it asks for. But, well, I mean, I can't go in because I'm over three for the hard modes, but that fills the requirements for that fleet. I don't require filling in a second battleship and another destroyer and a carrier in the back line for the boss fleet. As long as you fill in one requirement in the front and the back, in the front and the back for each fleet, then you're good. Um, so that gives you a lot of flexibility, especially during events. Uh, when you're trying to do hard modes, you know, C stages and D stages in events. It gives you more flexibility in terms of what ships you want to use so you don't feel as pigeonholed into using the specific ships it asks for. Um, quite a few people in our own Discord community actually didn't know this up until recently. Um, they have always tried to fill in all the slots. So just a tip, uh, not necessarily a mistake, but maybe just something you didn't know, um, is that you don't need to fill in all the requirements, just one of each in the front and the back for each fleet. Another mistake that I see newer players make is playing permanent content when a temporary event is out. So these events that have event shops um, and event currency are super, super good for new players. It gives you uh, blueprints for gear, generally good gear as well, especially, for example, in this event, Skybound Oratorio, uh, the CA gun that I've already purchased here uh, is, is really good. Um, you get tech boxes for more gear. You get plates, purple plates that are fairly hard to come by early on for newer players. Cat boxes, you don't really have to worry about those. Um, cognitive chips once you get to the point where you start awakening ships, stuff like that. So these events are actually incredibly useful for newer players. You get oil and gold and, and, and blueprints for the future when you start using your uh, PR ships once you get to that point. So it's very important that you take full advantage of these events. You want to make sure that you're running the event stages for as long as you can. Um, I'm not saying just like go in and, ha and like hardcore farm 12 hours a day. I'm just saying if you do get to play, if you ever do play during an event, make sure you prioritize the event content first. Um, if you've reached a point where, you know, you play 12 hours a day, you've bought out the shop, you don't care about it anymore, then by all means, you can go back to permanent content. But um, I see quite a few players, for whatever reason, going into... 3, 4 and mining or and fox mining instead of doing the event stages um, when they have like maybe 2000 points in the event. It's definitely, definitely way more worth your time going through the event, doing the event stages to get points and buying very useful resources for players early on. Make sure that you're doing the event stages. Very good. Permanent content will always be there. So don't worry about missing out. You know, if, you, if I don't do 3, 4 for Akagi and Kaga right now, I'm never going to get them. Don't worry about it. They'll always be there. Akagi and Kaga will always be at 3, 4. This event will not always be here. Make sure you prioritize event content over permanent content in order to get these very useful uh, resources that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. And lastly, the worst mistake that I think that new players make is not binding your account. Um, if you don't bind your account, there's a high risk of you losing your account. Let's say you have to reinstall the app for whatever reason. Let's say your phone breaks and, and you have to reinstall it on another phone and stuff like that. You won't be able to get your account back without going to Yostar, emailing them, being able to prove that it's your account. It's a bit of a hassle, hoping that you have your, um, you remember your commander name, your level and stuff like that. I kind of identifying information. It's a hassle. You don't want to have to do that. So please, 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 if you're a new player, make sure you bind your account. There's three ways to bind your account. You can either use Twitter, you can use a Facebook account, or you can just make a standalone Yostar account solely for Azure Lane so you don't have to link any social media if you don't want to. Just strongly, as they say here, we strongly advise you to bind your account. So make sure if you're a new player, one of the first things you do before you do anything else is bind your account. It's very important, guys. And that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys liked it as much as the first one. If you guys have any other th things that you can think of, common mistakes that newer players might be making that um, I should cover in a potential third video of the series, 
um, please leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you like my content, please uh, check out my other videos as well. And uh, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it a lot. If you guys want to follow me on Twitch, I stream Agilene, um two times a week or so um, at twitch.tv slash one Love to see you there. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace.